Hey and welcome to our presentation of OpenEO. We're very happy to be here uh, to present OpenEO to you. I'm here with my colleagues Matthias Mohr from the University of Münster and Michele Klaus from my team at Eurek Research. Uh, recently we had quite a lot of requests on the integration of OpenEO and Open Data Cube, so hopefully the information that we can give here hits a lot of interested ears. So let's get into it. So why do we need OpenEO? We have a lot of nice data sets available here, for example, from the Copernicus uh, mission, the Sentinel data, we have actually a long time series of, of those. And all we want to do is really just some simple analysis following trends in the pixel or and compare them with each other, do some analysis more advanced in, in radar data, maybe coherence or just classic generation of maps, land cover maps, for example. But then when we actually start working with this, we are confronted with something like this. We have a huge system with lots of different components, hardware, different cloud orchestrating systems, virtual machines, Docker containers. On top of this, all kinds of different tools for processing, accessing the data and so on. Our real data is stored here on some disk somewhere hidden away. And our analysis in the very end of this chain somewhere here. Quite often we don't even know how exactly this looks, we just refer to this as the cloud and just think of it as an abstract entity. And with this cloud, we come to the main complexity in, in the world that we live today. There's more than just one cloud. There's a cloud giving you access to the data using traditional file systems or using some kind of data cube technology or having some kind of more uh, advanced level access uh, in API. Um, Amazon um, S3 um, object store or something like this. And then when you want to access the data, you work in R, then you need to have different ways of doing this if you work in different clouds. So from R, you need to develop something to connect to a data cube, to a file system, or to an S3 storage, for example. In Python, you need to do the same things again. So you see where this is going. You're developing more and more different code just for accessing and the data and then if you use maybe web development javascript then again you have the same problem so how do we solve this we just um, define an api a standardized interface to which the different clients can talk and uh, also the backends can understand these requests um, and this is exactly what we set out to do with OpenEO. Uh, when we do the implementation, then you will see that a lot of work is not only the specification of the api but also the implementation once you get to this level, you can also do actually nice things like comparing the results from different APIs. Here's, for example, a result that we obtained from the original OpenEO uh, project, which colleagues at the EODC provided. And there they used OpenEO then to access all the different backends that at that time supported it and sent the exact same processing there and saw already that they got different results from every uh, request. So that's the first time that you can easily compare also how different backends work and what kind of results they deliver. And then using this, we were also able at later point to align the results so that they are all the same, mainly then coming also in the topic of analysis ready data, because the main issue why these data sets were different were actually that they had um, different pre um, definitions of analysis ready data and what was in the data cubes that you access there. Hi, my name is Matthias Mohr from the University of Münster. The OpenEO API specification covers a lot of functionality of the user's workflow in a single API. We're using existing standards as much as possible. It starts with exploring the service, including the available data and processes. Data discovery is based on the Stack API. Workflows can be created using a graph-like structure. Those can be stored as reusable workflows or be executed in several processing modes. Batch jobs for large-scale processing, synchronous jobs for smaller chunks or testing purposes, and dynamic web services such as WMTS can be used for on-demand processing so that, for example, only the area that is shown on the map is actually computed. The data processing workflows can work with user uploaded data and you can also embed user-defined functions into your workflows. Um, user-defined functions are basically custom code scripts, um, for example, in R or Python. Uh, all authentication and authorization is covered based on OpenID Connect, and accounting and billing are also covered in parts. Um, for example, they can show the used compute resources.
So how does this actually work now doing any analysis in Opinio? You start always with some kind of algorithm or application, some kind of a formula that you want to do, run on your pixels on your data set. In Opinio, those are represented actually in form of a graph. So all of these mathematical operators can also be linked and expressed as in graph notation. And then you want to apply this graph now on every pixel in a, in a bigger data set coming possibly from a data cube. So we can plug this graph here into a longer chain of processing, and that's actually the key feature of OpenEO, that all of these processes are chainable. So we, we load our data sets, we merge maybe different ones, then we apply our formula that we have defined previously, and finally uh, we store our results, for example, using GeoTIFF or any other format that we want. Also, we are not limited just by the existing processes that are available there. OpenEO has also a concept of uh, the so-called user-defined functions, where you can inject your own code into such a graph workflow. And uh, then you can write your code, for example, in R or, or Python, and just link that in the processing chain directly. Hi, I'm Michele Klaus from the Europe team. And in this example, you'll see how easy it is to use the OpenEO Python client. We firstly start importing the library, which can be installed using pip. After that, we'll define the connection parameters, which are specific for the backend. And then we'll connect and authenticate with the service endpoint. Once we are connected with the backend, we can start defining our process graph. And everything starts with a load collection process. The load collection process needs the collection, which we want to use, the area of interest, the temporal extent, and the bands. After that, we can pipe many different uh, processes, but in this case, we'll define the process to compute the NDVI. And at the end, we can uh, easily start a synchronous call and download our result as a GeoTIFF, for example, or as an XCF. The JavaScript client can be used in any JavaScript node or TypeScript project. For example, we have an Android and iOS app that makes use of the client, but what is shown here, the web editor, is the most advanced example of its use. It supports all parts of the OpenEO workflow, discovery, processing and visualization. It is probably the most beginner-friendly environment as it's like a model builder in QGIS and no coding is required. So how can OpenEO be used in a real-world application? For example, the mapping of uh, wet snow using SAR data. In this example, we access two existing data sets that we have, a time series of Sentinel-1 uh, data, and then also existing snow maps that derive from MODIS through OpenEO that are in our data cube. Then we can apply some kind of standard formulas that uh, that are um, that we need to prepare our data. For example, generation of reference images, and then subtracting all of them to normalize our our images from this reference image. And then we have maybe some more specific code that we want to pipe in as a UDF. Um, and define this also possibly in a different programming language. For example, R in this example. And finally, we can then uh, process all of this and get our result here in this small video, a time series of wet snow maps in one of the valleys here in South Tyrol where we are located. So we've shown how to get started as a user, but we would also like to point out the first steps as a service provider. First, it's a good idea to reuse the existing drivers or components that we've developed over the last years, including some libraries related to Open Data Cube. They are freely available on GitHub. If you need or want to implement an OpenEO service from scratch, you can start with some pre-generated code from OpenAPI Generator. You don't have to implement the full API at the beginning, just discovery, authentication and one of the processing modes is enough to get started. Everything else can then follow later. You'll find all the information about the connection between Open Data Cube and OpenEO at this address, where you see that there are three main repositories involved. The Process Graph parser translates the JSON OpenEO Process Graph into a Python object. Then the OpenEO ODC translates this graph into a Python script calling uh, Python processes that are defined in the third repo, the OpenEO Processes Python, where the actual XRA and DASK implementation is.
Opinol is now still in, in active development. It has already been started with the H2020 project uh, that has finished. And now we're continuing the work also in a new developed ESA project, the OpenEO platform, where OpenEO will be made available as a commercial service for all of those who do not have the time or the skills to set up their own infrastructure to, to run OpenEO. In this project, uh, then uh, the concept of OpenEO will also be further developed to also include things like federation of several backends in order to be able to do also more in terms of distributed computing. Well, with this, we come to an end and want to really thank you for your attention. Um, there are a lot of contacts and information on the project that you can find on openio.org or you, uh, if you have questions, you can contact us directly through uh, the OpenEO mailing list or through directly to myself and Matthias. Uh, if you are developing OpenEO, you can also uh, directly interact via GitHub, open issues uh, and make pull requests and so on. We are happy for any contribution there or follow us on all the other channels that we have. So thanks a lot again and have a great day.